Hello, hello, and welcome again to a Beatles program, which is called Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show in which we talk about anything there is to do with the Beatles. It could be any part of their past, the present, and very often, sometimes we talk about what we think will be happening in the future. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the four regular co-hosts of the show, also known for my Beatles syndicated show called Every Little Thing. Being joined by my three regulars. First of all, we have the executive editor of Beatle Fan Magazine. That's executive, me. executive, yay! <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Executive editor, and that's that's a mighty title there. You know, not something to sneeze at. Well, when I and when I, I was living in New York, that that and uh, was it two seventy five <laughs> would get me on the subway. <laughs> okay, but. But we here at the show respect that title very okay. highly. So do Beatle fans around the world. So. Okay. And that's uh, Al Sussman there. Hi, Al. <laughs> Hi, Ken. Hello there, everybody. Also, we have our resident musicologist, and he's a contributing writer. It's a Beatle fan. Also spent many years writing for the New York Times. Still does once in a while. And that is Al Cozen. Hi, Al. Hi, Ken. How are you doing? Hello, everyone. And we have contributing writer to Billboard.com and Axis.com, and for many years wrote for Beatles Examiner, and that is Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hello, Ken. Hello, everyone. And once again here on the program, we have a special guest, and she is the author of several books, one of which we've talked about here on the show called Songs You Were Singing, Guided Tours to the Beatles' Less Known Tracks, and more recently, the book Michael Jackson FAQ. Uh, that being Kit O'Toole. Hi, Kit. Hey, Ken. Hi, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, we're going to be talking about a number of things today. Uh, Most importantly, we're going to be looking back at uh, this previous year. And Kit, I know, uh, put together an article for Beatle Fan in which she discussed her Christmas wish list. So we're all going to be talking about this past year, highlights of the year, and uh, what we might recommend to people who listen to our show to buy, possibly, from this past year. But before we do that, we have a major uh, story here to talk about, and that is uh, last week the news broke that Flowers in the Dirt, Paul McCartney's 1989 album, would be coming out, finally, uh, the remaster for that, and that'll be in March of next year. We first heard word about this as a possible release when it was listed on Amazon. And now we have all the details, or we hope to have all the details, about the remastered uh, package, uh, especially the deluxe package, as it's been reported. And especially it's on Paul's own website if you want to see all the contents at paulmccarty.com. But um, for those of you that don't know, it's the, it's the album of 13 tracks. And then for the deluxe version... There are two CDs, each with nine demos, and it's the same. Uh, it's demos for the same songs. We believe one of the CDs is is um, Paul and Elvis together with demos, and the other CD we think is Paul with the band doing demos. And these are all songs that Paul and Elvis wrote together. Let me clarify that, Ken, because what I was told. Uh, exactly was that the second set of demos is more developed and you can take that I suppose whatever way you want to um, I you can uh, I mean I would guess that there's probably more instrumentation on them but uh, I mean knowing you know hearing what we've hear, heard in the past that doesn't necessarily mean that but I mean I, I think that's probably a good guess that there is I have a theory a to, Go ahead, Alan. I have a theory. Mm-hmm. A dinosaur is thin on... I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, when Paul and Elvis were working on those songs, the original intent, at least as I gather from Elvis's autobiography, was that they mm. were making an album together. And I think they, you know, did the demos and then they sat down to do the finished stuff. And then Paul sort of set it aside and did flowers in the dirt instead so it could be that disc two is more of the finished songs or more of however far they got on what would have been the paul and elvis album Hmm. maybe it's wishful thinking but Mm -hmm. yeah that would be interesting Hmm. to hear that second that second disc especially yeah 
Yeah. Because there has been, and I'm sure many people are aware, there was a, a bootleg that came out that was really wonderful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Called yeah. the uh, Paul McCartney sure. Elvis McManus collaboration. Yeah. And it pretty much has everything on there that you'd hope would be on there, including demos for all their songs together. Yeah. Plus, they even threw on there a couple of live performances from Paul and Elvis together when they mm. did Mistress and Maid. Uh, right, right. And, and also mm -hmm. uh, One After 909. Mm -hmm. And. Um, so yeah. you have these two discs of demos, and then you've also got a DVD on there, which will have the Put It There documentary, and a, whole, a few other things. And plus, this is where the big controversy comes in. A lot of uh, recordings that are available as downloads only, and they amount to most of the, the bonus material that you could have found on the CDs and the CD singles that were released at the time. And we're led to believe, at least right now anyway, that the only way to get those songs is as downloads, that they're not being made available on CD, which has caused a bit of an uproar uh, online about that. And I, can, I kind of sympathize with the people who feel that way. But I want to know, just based on this information, since we don't have everything in detail yet, you know, what you guys think so far of this package of uh, the deluxe flowers in there. Why don't we just start with? Um, well, why don't we start with you, Kit? Well, I, I have to admit, I'm 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 stupidly excited about this because I just uh, <laughs> uh, I I you know when you were talking about the bootleg, uh, that wonderful bootleg, the McCartney McManus. It's just uh, I'm just so glad that that the material, whether you know whether it's in demo form or you know speculating on whether it's going to be more complete. Whatever you know that means, I, it's wonderful to finally have this officially released. I'm particularly excited. I think Playboy to a Man is on there. Yes. Uh, I think it was part of that, and I'm excited to hear that because, of course, that was on Mighty Like a Rose, uh, and I'd love to hear the early version of it. So I'm very excited about that, as well as, as far as the the download issue goes. You know, I, I have very mixed feelings about that because, on the one hand. You know, it's not a, a big deal, really, to download material. And, I, I mean, I'll be, you know, ripping all this stuff um, to my computer anyway. I mean, you know, so people are generally used to it. However, I definitely see the other side because what is the price tag for the deluxe right now? It's like... 149 it? yeah, yeah, I knew I knew it was in the 140s somewhere. I mean, that is a lot. <laughs> and uh, mm. I mean, I'll I'll get it. I mean, I'll I'm sure I'll get it because it is a personal. This album's a personal favorite. But you know, it probably wouldn't have killed them to offer. You know, just put it on another CD. So I mean, I get what people are saying that that's a lot of money to spend to then have to download more tracks. You know, but despite these flaws, despite the controversy, I'm very excited. I think this is going to be a, a terrific, terrific package. Yeah, and as well, a lot of people have pointed out, and I guess it's true, if you took all the material on both CDs of the demos, you probably could fit it all on one CD anyway. Right? So right. you could have made room for a CD of all the, the B-sides and the bonus stuff anyway. Yeah. We've 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 complained about that before and and he has an awful habit of doing that and mm. yeah. you know you would think that he, somebody would get a clue and finally figure out that hey let's uh you know do these things a little more compact and it'll make them a, a little more you know uh worth the money but uh especially so, since he's supposed to be you know green i mean why waste another disc and leave half a disc empty and you know right and mm. right <laughs> 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 I think I think the yeah I think the issue with download is not a question of having to download it. I think it's a question of perceived quality. You know, on a disc you're getting it as, you know, basically one would say CD quality since it is a CD whereas downloading it I mean I don't know Paul has has made various kinds of downloads available before, you know, all the deluxe editions come with um, a free download, and some of the downloads are in really, really high quality beyond CD. Really, mm. you can you can download WAV files at you know uh, twenty four ninety six. Files. Or, Flat files are my favorite. Yeah, I mean, I, those are great. <laughs> right. So um, and uh, so, I mean, I, people who are thinking about the quality once they sort of remember that this is what 
the downloads tend to be, or you at least have the choice, may think differently about it. But I, I think also the people want people want the convenience of it being on a CD, even if they're going to rip the CD to their computer, which mm. I mean I'm going to do too. But but yeah, I, I think it's it's just kind of a perceived. I, you know, I just don't think they necessarily always or kind of like ever think through what their fans actually want. We we've discussed that in many many contexts before um mm-hmm. but yeah i mean it looks like a great package uh, in terms of the stuff that would be on that cd that's missing i mean probably a lot of us who are going to buy this disc have the japanese two cd set that has all the b-sides and everything on it anyway so we mm-hmm. sort of have that stuff on cd mm-hmm. well not us. everything is on that japanese double disc okay right great collection but yeah not everything Okay. Not everything is on here either. I mean, PS uh, was a PS. Let, Let me, me do. do. Is, yeah, is not there. So yeah. Well, you yeah. know, there's another thing, which is that Paul, through the years, not just on Flowers in the Dirt, but in this particular case, he has put out songs that were that were bonus tracks that are older material that wouldn't really fit if you're just assembling songs from this period. Because, for example, uh, on the Put It There CD single he released uh, Mama's Little Girl Mm -hmm. as well as Same Time Next Year. So those are both from the 70s, so that wouldn't make sense to put on here. But at the same time... Just Love Me Do, he played that on the tour. So I don't... Why why not put it on here? That doesn't make any... That's that's not an argument. Okay, well, I'm just just saying that there are are some things that, that don't make sense. There's actually one recording that I thought of immediately, which is he recorded The Long and Winding Road, a version of that, which right. was really nice, a very simple arrangement of it. Yeah. And certainly for the people that, that constantly mock the, the Phil Spector arrangement of The Long and Winding Road, they probably prefer this version. And it was really nice. It was one mm-hmm. of the bonus tracks on, um, I think, Figure of Eight. Mm. Uh, one of the different CD singles of Figure of Eight. So, yeah. uh, you know, it doesn't have everything on here. Yeah. I think, however, you know, another thing that people are overlooking when they're complaining about the missing disc and the downloads is how much stuff this set comes with. I mean, all the, yeah, the books right. and photos and and the, right. the DVD. Let's not forget the DVD. I mean, the, mm-hmm. in the past, they've been very light on material, and I think this DVD has quite a bunch of stuff that, that we kind of want. So, mm-hmm. um yeah, I was really excited that they were going to uh, put the uh, put it there documentary on there because I I have that on VHS and right. that was a great great documentary. So I'm glad that they're that's a wonderful addition. Yeah. <laughs> Al, what about your thoughts? Well, uh, actually, it was echoing what uh, what Alan was just saying is that probably this set probably has more total material on it than almost any of the the previous certainly any of the recent uh archive releases which have been fairly skimpy on uh on archival material but uh you know as far as the you know the 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 downloading situation you know people people basically have to grow up you know the it's you know it's it's a new it's a you know it's a new world technologically and obviously obviously it's a cost cutting mechanism for uh, for capital to to do one disc's worth of material as downloads but you know these days that's I mean, in fact, Alan, you can probably sort of expand on this because if I remember correctly, uh, you even said on 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 this on this on this show uh, that when you got the the Dylan set of the sixty five sixty six recordings, mm-hmm. that Sony then gave you notice that there was another whole bunch of stuff. Like another 12 discs worth or so, maybe yeah, more. Right. And, yeah, right. And they were only, uh, were they only available as downloads? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh-huh. the, difference, the difference there is that that was a complete surprise. All you expected to be getting when you bought the box set was the box set. And this came as a bonus after the fact. And maybe, mm. maybe McCartney should have done that. But um, actually, if he hadn't 
I think, announced that these things would be at least downloads, everybody would be saying, well, where's back on my feet? Where's this? Where's that? Yeah, you know? right. So, um, so I guess they had to do something like right up front and download is their solution. But, yeah, you know, look, there are some people who are putting out albums only on download now. Yeah, and exactly. here, true, too. And here Alan, you're getting – mm-hmm. Alan, I was, I was going to ask what, what format did those downloads come in? Were they MP3s? Yeah, those were MP3s. See, there's the there's an issue right there. I mean, because a lot of people are going to be complaining about the fact that they're I think compressed they were. quality. I think they and were. you think so? I think they were MP3s. I mean, it's it's over a year ago, so. But McCartney um, traditionally has used FLAC files. Uh, uh, somebody pointed out online because I'm looking at some of the comments. Wave files. I'm I'm. I can't remember, but I know he's used FLAC files. But if he uses FLAC files, they'll sound fantastic. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. the only thing yeah. you'll have to do is, is burn them yourself, you know. But, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I've, I've, I've said I kind of wish he didn't do this um, for the convenience sake. I mean, I like having everything with a set in the set, you know, and to have, especially yeah, when you pay course. this much money, when you pay this much money, you shouldn't have to go through, you know, unless he's given you like Dylan did 12 more discs of stuff. That's an entirely different issue. This is not 12 discs of stuff. And uh, I mean, this is actually pretty, uh, not a whole lot. So I, uh, yeah, I, I can't see, you know, I, I, I think this is kind of uh, a little on the crazy side, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Maybe, maybe there is something more to come. I don't know. I'm just that's just I'm just guessing off the top. Probably not, but it's mm. still. Well, I got to tell you that I have some complaints to make about this, but it's not necessarily what you guys are saying. But I do happen to feel that, first of all, to Paul's credit, if you take a look at all the remasters he's put out, he's made them available on vinyl. Mm-hmm. He's made them available as as um, you know high quality digital files, right. as well as on CD. So he's addressing that. But what bothers me the most about this is not just the fact about the download issue, because I don't like to buy things as downloads. I really want the physical product, and that's just mm-hmm. me. You know, And it could be an age thing, but when mm-hmm. you think about it, as much as I would love to say that so many people who are going to buy this are teenagers, I don't think that's the case. Most of the people who are going to be buying this are older folks, like us, well, not Kit, but she's not <laughs> in the same category. He's a little Thank you, younger. Jen. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> you just made, you just made, okay. You just insulted the rest of us. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> but, but the older folks want physical product. So we're going to be caring more about the CDs than getting stuff digitally. But it's not just that. The thing is that, yes, when this album came out, there was some attention decent amount of attention given to the fact that Paul was working with Elvis Costello on finding songs, as they should have at the time. But this is not a Paul McCartney and Elvis Costello album. And the only bonus material that we're getting on CD here are the Paul and Elvis songs. And so to me, I'm looking at this as though all those B-sides, bonus songs, are given a lower status. You know, there's more to Flowers the Dirt than the fact that there are four songs on the album that were Paul and Elvis songs. And not only that, the way that Paul and Elvis work was that they released, they scattered these songs on each other's albums. And so some of the songs that are on here as bonus material on the CDs were on Off the Ground. There were songs that were on Off the Ground, not Flowers in the Dirt, and on Elvis' albums. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't like the fact that all the attention on CD is being given to Paul and Elvis songs as much as I love those songs. Mm-hmm. So at hmm. the same time, I can also see from a listening point of view, there's four different mixes of Ue Le Soleil. <laughs> oh, um, there. Oh, I thought that, you know, Alan is just foaming at the mouth. Over oh, the yeah, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, <laughs> it's me too. I don't know how many fans listen to all different mixes of the same song over and over and over again. I mean, I, I remember when Hope for the Future came out, and there are all these different mixes that came out at the same time. How many times do you listen to every mix over mm, and over? Right. So as a listening experience, you know, I wouldn't want a CD that had four mixes of the same song all at once. By the same token, you know, I just feel like those songs, the bonus material, and some of these songs are great. Flying to my home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great one. 
B sides, right? Yeah, I love Good Sign. I thought that was a great dance track there. Well, that stuff like that should not be resigned to just being downloads. Right. So, you know, I just feel like they're separating that from the Paul and Elvis stuff. And this wasn't a Paul and Elvis album. It was a Paul and Elvis album on four tracks out of 13. Well, but it was intended originally as a Paul and Elvis album, and then they did the different thing. I mean, the mm. idea of scattering among both of their albums was was kind of a solution of what to do with the songs that they had done for an album that they were going to do together. Plus, uh, you know, uh, frankly, the at least the unreleased material that has been th- the most in demand are indeed those demos with, with Elvis Costello. Mm-hmm. Well, fine, but like I said before, you could have fit them all on one CD, and you could have made a second CD of just all the bonus stuff. Sure. Mm. Yeah. And, there's and you could have had just Uwe Le Soleil's downloads, have those four mixes as <laughs> those <laughs> downloads, and you know probably yeah. nobody would complain and nobody would right. be even bothered downloading is, them, except those of us, those of us who want to make um, mashups with Cambridge 69. There we go. <laughs> and there's probably more stuff from the studio that could have been tacked onto this, you know, set. Yeah. Um, that is not in there. I mean, that's relatively little when you think mm. about it. So. Yeah. And then what do you do when Off the Ground comes out? So now you're not gonna. You're probably not gonna have the Paul and Elba stuff on there. Then mm-hmm. I guess you would make way for all the bonus material there and put that on a CD. Mm-hmm. So why is it on one album you don't put the bonus material on on CD and the other one you would? Yeah, I don't want to get too wrapped up in the logic of Paul, <laughs> if there is logic here being used. But uh, you know, and then you got a situation like Back on My Feet. The demo is there uh, for Back on My Feet, as well as the recording for uh, the studio recording for that song, and that was the B side of Once Upon a Long Ago, yeah. which is not on here. Right. So, I guess he's 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 saving that for a press to play. I guess I don't know. I I don't want to get into Paul's mind. <laughs> it's too dangerous. <laughs> oh, admit it, Ken. You do. <laughs> uh, uh, no, so, but I'm still excited about the whole thing. I mean, "Flowers the Dirt" is my favorite McCartney album. I love the entire album. I love the material. So, to hear all these demos will be great. But the whole it does bother me the whole download issue. Anyway, so, there you go. There so you go. Why don't, we, why don't we move on to our main topic, which is the Christmas list that uh, Kit has put together, as well as did I, did I give my did I give my opinion? I, yeah, I, I guess I did. did. Okay. Mm-hmm. All okay. Right. You, you yep. can continue. We can continue. No, I'm no. I, I think I, I think I basically said you know as as, as an album. I mean, uh, I'm pretty excited about this too, and I don't normally get excited about McCartney albums. Uh, that much, um, but um, I mean, I like. I thought this album was some of his best work. Um, mm-hmm. My brave face was just tremendous, and, and yeah. it was really representative of how good this, you know, this album was. And as much as I, I mean, I, I remember. I mean, this was the first, also the first tour that I saw McCartney. Me too. In fact, I'm. This is one of the few shows that I've been to that it's actually out on bootleg, and. Mm-hmm. The way and it's the um, it's the Berkeley show, and I'll never forget as they were singing um, uh, "Figure of Eight, Linda yelled, "Yeah!" And I remember I remember smiling and turning to my wife and going, "Yeah, I mean, can you believe that?" And and uh, and it's on the bootleg, clear as a bell. I mean, the, they got a, a soundboard from it, but um, cool. yeah, <laughs> I, 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 that was a, a memorable moment from that show. But, yeah. yeah, I do want to bring up one thing because there's actually one song title here of the Paul and Elvis songs that I've never heard of. The Tommy one, yeah. No, no, that was on the the bootleg. That was on yeah, the it was McManus. Huh. Yeah. yeah, but there's one called "I Don't Want to Confess," oh, which is right. listed as a cassette demo. Have any of you ever heard about that song? No, mm-hmm. no. Okay. New well, story? there's a song that's entirely hey. new <laughs> to us. So. There you go. Yep. Why don't we move on to the Christmas Hanukkah. Uh, list and Hanukkah <laughs> and Kwanzaa list of uh, 2016. Festivus. <laughs> let's, let's cover them all. 
<laughs> there we go. I haven't mentioned whatever your, your representation is. We, we're sorry. But the list for 2016. Kit, why don't we start with you? Well, I mean, you know, the the obvious ones um, that that I listed, I mean, you know, Eight Days a Week was, was the major release um, and certainly the most hyped um, of the year. And, um, you know, and it's interesting because I'm still, in fact, I'm, I'm getting, I think my copy is going to arrive tomorrow, uh, the DVD. Uh, it's interesting how a lot of people are saying that the extras are actually better uh, than the, than the you know, original film in some ways. So I'm, I'm I think very, we basically kind of said that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And so cool. I'm, I'm very, very anxious to, uh, to see that. So that's a, a must. Uh, the Hollywood bowl was, was a huge, uh, highlight for me this year. I mean, to hear those recordings in such clarity, you know, it was just, uh, to me, a revelation. And I know there's some flaws with it. And people are saying, you know, why wasn't the whole concert uh, put in, you know, why in sequence and that sort of thing. And that's true. Those are those are some downsides. But I'll tell you, I mean, to me, it was it was just a, it, it was a brand new experience listening to this to this remaster. And, and uh, uh, that was one of my all time favorite uh, releases this year. And one of the books uh, that I recommended on on my list, which actually ran on uh, something news. It's not in Beetle Fan. It's uh, something else reviews. Right. Um, but uh, the book, The Beatles in Canada, by Piers Hemmingson. Mm. Mm. Yeah. This. Yeah. <laughs> I really was blown away by this. Um, it is a beautifully done. Uh, I mean, it's sort of a coffee table book in a way, in that there are just some some gorgeous, gorgeous uh, reproductions of memorabilia but this is a case where just when you think you've heard everything there is to hear about the beatles there are these stories that that come out in these 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 you know areas of beatles history that you just don't know much about or you for whatever reason don't think as much about it and this is a full look at how the beatles you know broken canada what the canadian scene music scene was like at the time what you know how canadian radio helped uh, uh, break them, and it, it to me, it was just fascinating, you know. Mm. I, I wouldn't recommend it for a casual fan, you know. This is more for mm. the collector, for the researcher. But uh, but Piers just, just did an incredible job. Mark Lewison writes the foreword for it, and uh, and it's it to me, that was a, a, another highlight and, and a revelation of, of 2016. I can't recommend this book enough. Okay. Anything else for the year? Uh, let's see. Oh, another book that came out by, by someone we all know, and this is another case of a story you don't think that much about, is Sarah Schmidt, who we all know from uh, Meet the Beatles for Real, the site, she came out with a book called Beatlemania in St. Louis, and she chronicled their all their tours, you know, tour stops there. Um, and what's really great about it is there are some rare photos in there. I mean, you know, it's just it's sort of an extension of her site in a way. That uh, that is really uh, interesting. Again, just just sort of zooming in on a particular area of Beatles history and how Beatlemania in, impacted one town. And I should also mention uh, Klaus Vormann's book, um, uh, "Birth of an Icon Revolver 50. A mm-hmm. yeah. uh, little bit of a splurge, but it's, yes. it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a splurge. But it's worth it. It's it's a beautifully done uh, book where you know he. It's sort of a graphic novel, really, where he mm-hmm. sort of retells the story of the recording of Revolver. But you know, talk about an inside view. Mm, <laughs> I mean, right. Yeah, right. and and it's just you know, but but to have it instead of just, I mean, he could have just written a, a straightforward book on it. He could have just done you know uh, had had a co-writer interview him or whatever. But to do it in this way. You know, in the in the uh, in this graphic novel, and of course he does the, the the illustrations. I thought was so unique and uh, in a great way to mark the 50th anniversary, of course, of the album. So, as I said, if you're looking for a splurge, this is a a real. I mean, it's it's a keepsake, even more than just a, a book on the making of an album. It's it's beautifully beautifully done. Wow, I really want to see that book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's gorgeous. It is. It really yeah. is. And, uh, yeah, very, very special. Any Beatles fan will love this book. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, when you mentioned the Beatles in St. Louis, it reminded me of the Beatles in Cleveland from Dave yeah. Swenson. Right. Dave so when you're Dave, Dave, Dave yeah. Swenson's book, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a great zeroing in on a on a particular city. So uh, yeah, and oh. I believe there's a there's another one too. Um, Belmo, uh, I believe, did a did a yes. book. Yes, can't remember. I can't remember what city he focused on. I can't on. remember mm. either. But yeah, that would Belmo, yes, Belmo did one too. Yeah, those localized and I mean, there's been a couple of DVD things of Beatles and Ford. Those localized things are are really kind of cool. It's too bad there isn't one for more you know more cities, but. Uh, so Sarah did a Sarah did do a good job, and she also covered Benton, Illinois, in in the book, which which was kind of which was something I didn't expect, and and I asked her about that, and uh, but yeah, she did that too, and and the the rare graphics in there are just really really nice. She did a good job with that. That's true, and absolutely, and I should mention uh, another one that that I I recommend a, a friend of uh, of all of ours, uh, Ken Womack. Um, right. Has finally, mm-hmm. yep, finally released the paperback version of the Beatles Encyclopedia, and mm-hmm. I'll tell you. I mean, I've talked about this book with with many people. Um, I have the hardcover version, and I really think it's a must add for any anyone's library. I mean, I refer to it all the time. You know, it's a great okay. way to look up, you know, specific areas, some dates, you know, things like. I mean, it's just a great reference and. And this being Ken, it's a very thorough uh, look. But uh, but the hardcover version was really meant for libraries. It was pretty cost prohibitive. Well, mm. now he finally came out with the paperback version. So I definitely recommend that one as well. Mm. Okay, very good. All right, Steve. Well, a few a few of what she mentioned are, are more on my list too. The the revolver book was. Uh, I also mentioned a, a couple of other coffee table books uh, uh tom murray's mad day out which mm. basically goes back through it's it i mean he's done books on this before but he went back to the original sites for this one and, and uh, so and reprinted the pictures the uh, beatles the hard days night a private archive with mm-hmm. the captions by mark lewison is yeah. another mm. that those are there's a lot of unseen pictures in that there's the genesis book hello goodbye the beatles in tokyo 66 which one of us, uh, Mr. Cozen, uh, is involved with. He, he wrote the introduction. Mm-hmm. Those are all the pictures on and off stage taken by uh, Shinpei Asai. There's also All You Need Is Love, with all the, which is actually a really nice book because it's got all the, all the uh, unused pictures from that session. But getting away from the photo books, um, I had a lot of things on my list that were kind of relate, half-related. I just this weekend finished watching... Candy and Blind Man, um, both of which uh, Candy came out on on Blu-ray in the summer. Blind Man came out um, again in November. It's been out before, but according to what I've seen, the uh, versions have been edited. This is the unedited uh, hour and forty-five minute version, and they're both they both have kind of a parallel. Ringo plays a Mexican gardener in Candy and a Mexican bandit in. <laughs> In Blind Man, and um, and he has an accent. I mean, hearing, listening to Ringo trying to fake a Mexican accent is hilarious. And the film producers at that time must have been talking amongst themselves. We need a Mexican voice. Oh, no, Ringo! <laughs> Ringo. <laughs> Maybe we can get him to pay for the wall. Really, Candy is Candy is hilarious. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, if you, I'm sure you guys have seen it. Uh, uh, unfortunately, guess. yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> the fact they got all those people in there was really, I mean, you know, Marlon Brando, James Coburn. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's uh, you know, I mean, the the cast of that thing is just absolutely stunning. John Aston, who actually is really good. And so this is out on Blu-ray for the first time. Blind Man is not they they did not send me a Blu-ray so I don't have I don't know if I don't think it's out on Blu-ray. Blind Man is a very brutal film. And Ringo is not a nice guy in this film at all. And it's a it's a kind of a Clint Eastern spaghetti western. Mm. Um and what's really funny is Tony Anthony who plays Blind Man for a blind guy can sure ha- has good aim. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's hilarious. Um, but uh, and and actually, in doing research, I didn't know this. Uh, according to IMDb, Alan Klein is in the movie. I mean, this is the, the DVD comes from Abco Films. Alan Klein is in the movie. 
He plays mm. a guy hiding in a window, which I I missed. I didn't I didn't catch that, uh, but uh, I mean that's kind of funny. He was going uh, for a, going for a Hitchcock thing. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> probably. I mean, but uh, I mean, both of them are uh, you know both of them for you know are full full of. Neither of these are G rated. Let's put it that way. They are very very R, and. Um, so there you go. But getting all right. Let's get away from those. Um, other things to recommend: sound breaking, which is mm. you know, which I, oh, oh, absolutely. Haven't fabulous. started watch, I have, yeah. I've only started watching that. I haven't seen the whole thing yet. It's fabulous. Yeah, yeah. It absolutely. Is. And, and what's really a knockout on that is the use of not only Beatle recording sessions, but other people's recording sessions. Mm-hmm. So there's yeah. not just, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, there's, there's all sorts of recording sessions in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, the interviews and everything are fantastic. Peter Asher is among the people in there. It's really good. I mean, that's just fantastic. The Tammy show the, and the big TNT show on Blu-ray. TNT has not been out on DVD before. What's the Beatles content there? Well, there is no there is no Beatles content, but there is Jerry and the Pacemakers, Billy J. Billy, Kramer, Billy J. Kramer, uh-huh. right? So there is okay. Brian Peripheral. Epstein, yeah, and plus the Rolling Stones um, are mm-hmm. there, uh, and there's all sorts. Of, I mean, just about as I wrote, just about every group that was big in the '60s or in '64 uh, and '65 is there, except for the Beatles. <laughs> so that's of interest. Um, the Beach Boys party and unplugged. Uncovered and Unplugged has, I, I think I counted, 14 different covers of Beatles songs. I mean, of the same songs. Tell they me do, why. Tell me why. Right. I should have known better. Uh, I should have known better. Uh, Ticket to Ride. Plus Twist and Shout and Long Call Sally. And uh, it's two CDs uh, with over 80 tracks. And if you get the Amazon exclusive, it comes with a free uh, lithograph. From the, of the Beach Boys in the studio, which is actually really nice looking. Um, that's the way. That's the way I got it. Another kind of Beatle related thing is the Mickey Dolan's MGM Singles Collection, which has the when the thing was first put out on digital, or actually, yeah, he, uh, Mickey included a single of a session he did with Christian Nesmith and Sir Sir Link um, that included a, a version of Good Morning, Good Morning. That's on the CD now. And, I mean, the collection itself, I mean, it, it seems like it's all kind of haphazard, but it actually works very nicely. Mm-hmm. So there's there's something else. And also, Terry Draper of Clatu has a new album called Searching that, of course, is very Beatle-ish all the way through. Um, there's no Beatle covers, but he does do Younger Girl and Flower Girl from The Rain, The Park, and The Other Things by The Cow Hills. But it, it does as it's a very clatuish, beatleish sounding CD. So, mm. and and I also mentioned um, two other books: uh, Beatles '66 by Steve Turner, which is a good review of 1966, and Paul McCartney: The Life, which is a okay look at Paul McCartney, although it's more the person rather than the musician. Which we've talked. Which oh, we, that's the that's the Philip Norman book. Philip yeah. Norman book. Which right. we talked. Which we talked about when we right. when we had. It. So, there's my big list. I mean, that's yeah, that's a long list there. Steve. <laughs> uh, it, it took me a while to dig all that stuff. So the candy and the candy and the blind man thing was fun watching that over the weekend. It was like, am I really watching these two things back to back? I mean, yeah, I did basically, but. Those are something, and and actually, as I as I point out, a lot of his films are still. I mean, a, a lot of his films are available on CD. Uh, Two hundred motels. Where else? Where's my list? Two hundred motels. List of list of mania. Magic Christian, of course. Uh, Caveman. That's right. And yeah. also, and also, Sextet, which is the the May West. final May the West. final <laughs> film. May West. Yeah. So. Yeah. What about that'll be the day. I think that's out of print. I think that's long out of print. I, you know, I didn't yeah. look that, up, but I believe that's okay. that's out of print. I have that on Laserdisc. I have it on. I have the DVD. It may be Ringo. I think that's Ringo's only nude scene, actually. So there hmm. we go. I'm hearing crickets right. chirping in the background. <laughs> I don't. I really don't remember that, Steve. Ringo, <laughs> you what? I really don't remember that. Don't remember that. Don't remember that? Look, I must have averted it. my eyes. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're right. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I just, yes. I just like the silence that uh, <laughs> no. accompanies no. that. Let's all think about that. Ringo naked. All right. Mm. Moving on. <laughs> Alan, how about your list? Okay. Um, well, several of the things I would have mentioned to already have been, for instance, Hard Day's Night Private Archive, really nicely done. Um, um, and I was going to mention the Shinpei Asai book as well, um, since I've written the the historical background part mm-hmm. of it. Um, and they're really good pictures. Um, strangely, you know, I mean, I don't know if, if, if people, people who are really into the Japanese tour, there are now like maybe four books worth of things, including one by Robert Whitaker, who followed them to Japan. Ooh. And Whitaker has, you know, an mm-hmm. awful lot of interesting stuff. I mean, one, th- one thing I was kind of surprised that Shinpei Asai didn't have is the Beatles painting, you know, the collaborative painting they did in Tokyo, which Robert Whitaker has um, several shots of them working on. Um, but I guess... Um, Mr. Asai wasn't there, the, you know, when they were working on it. But he, you know, he has his he has a very interesting approach to, you know, he he shot them doing various things, playing with some of the um, things people gave them, like Japanese instruments, um, a shakuhachi, uh-huh. and uh, I think, a, uh, not a koto, but there's a guitar-like instrument, a, a samisen, I think it may be called. And uh, things like that. And he also, in a lot of cases, shoots the empty room or the table where they were eating or something like that. It gives you perspective of, you know, what the place was like where they were staying in the the Tokyo Hilton. I also, I mean, seeing seeing as, uh, you know, my pals at Genesis have been pretty busy this year. uh, Apart from Shimpei Asai, Mm -hmm. there's a new version of I Me Mine that that was supposed to be available for Christmas. And um, I think it's been put forward um, to like January or February. But uh, yeah, it's, and and that comes with a seven inch single that has, I think it has a demo of All Things Must Pass or one of the All Things Must Pass songs. I was a little disappointed by what they were including on the disc because that wasn't, you know, they announced that there'd be a disc, um, details to come later, and, and, and they really just announced it, and it's just like really one track that we don't have. But, um, you know, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, mine, everyone pretty much probably has the original trade version or the Mm. original Genesis version. Mm -hmm. It was a a really nicely done book and they've added, um, you know, pictures of his manuscripts of a whole bunch of songs from after 1980. Um, Mm. Right. So it's expanded and it's, um, I think worth getting. Let's see. Um, Chuck Gunderson's books, um, came out in paperback this year. So if you didn't get Mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah. So oh, the, yeah. I missed. I, why didn't I mention those? Yeah, yep, I forgot the, the, too. To leave me something to say, Steve. <laughs> there um, you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I don't know. Did Leninology come out this year or last year? But I don't I think know. it was it's late still, last year. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you don't have it, you know, it's still in print. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> our our pals who've been on the show, um, the Weaklings. You know, it's funny. Yeah. Uh, yes. I've I've actually been listening to their album. You know, a bunch of times since we had them on and it's it's really a lot of fun and mm. uh so you know if if you somehow haven't um gotten that or you know passed it by it's it's definitely a, a fun thing to spend some time with and uh, and they're good musicians and so i'm all for supporting good musicians so let's see that pretty much by is the way the, the i have i have one more one more thing to mention that i just thought of uh, just mm-hmm. now uh, Lars Juber just put out a Christmas album, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to trying to look it up here because I can't remember the the full name of it. And it's really beautiful. I mean, he did a fantastic. I mean, it's it's called Holidays and Holly Nights, mm-hmm. and it's t- and it's typical Lawrence Juber, it's, I, which means to say it, it's very acoustic based. And he does a a beautiful job finger uh, finger picking some great uh, uh, Christmas songs and. Basically, there's no Beatles stuff in it. I mean, although he does kind of sneak in a, a what appears to sound like a a Beatles uh, uh, riff at one point, but I mean, it's a beautiful album. 
So you know what's worth yeah. looking for. It, I don't know if it's still in print even, but but it's traveling around online various places. There's a group called the Fab Four did an album called Hark. You all right. know that yes. one. Uh, and, oh yeah. And basically, yeah. it's Christmas songs done in the style that the Beatles, you know, did them. So so for instance, you know, they'll, they'll take a, a Christmas song lyric and basically do it as help. Or, or I saw her standing. Mm-hmm. And I saw her standing there. They do Rudolph the Red Red Nosed Reindeer. And, is, <laughs> in um, fact, I think they did. I think they've done two, and then the sort of antecedent of that is uh, this album by this group called the Rubber Band, who right. mm-hmm. called themselves oh, Beatmus, right? Uh, which yes. was. Um, mm-hmm. I believe I think it was called Hark, if I remember correctly. No, Hark is no, Hark Hark's Fab Four album. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Beatmus is Beatmus is. Um, I can't remember the name of it now, but yeah, yeah no. you're right about about but that Beatmus coming yeah. first. There's also another album called, I believe I believe it's called Abbey Road Christmas, mm-hmm. um, that also has imitations of the Beatles uh, on it that isn't nearly as good as the Fab Four. Uh, I'm, I, I mean, I have it. I have a download of it but I, uh, that I, I bought from eMusic, I think it was. But it's not that great. Um, mm. It's not nearly as good as the Fab Four. Uh, yeah, the, the Fab Four and Beatmas I play on my Christmas show every year. Right. Oh, yeah. great. Yeah. So, they and are, the Fab yeah. Four ones are so well done and so well executed. And, and the brilliance of it is trying to coordinate these Christmas songs and thinking what Beatles song works with it. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, the most brilliant thing of all was Frosty the Snowman, which starts off just like Mr. Moonlight. Yes. <laughs> and the guy who, who sings the lead vocal sounds so much like John. And, it's just, and uh, I think Felice Navidad is done like, and I love her. And it really works. And Hark, Hark <laughs> is done. Hark, the Herald Angel sing is done. I think like help, and they did. And they, and they yeah. did a video for yeah. it where they do basically a shot by shot version of of uh, the the film version of Help. Um, and they also they use the count in from from um, the studio uh, from the from the bootleg where um, <laughs> the engineer counts in and says uh, uh, take take two or something. Um, <laughs> So I mean that's and and if you go and I was listening to it the other day and what was funny was you can hear all these licks that they just lifted straight from Beatle albums right onto the you know right into the music it's it's hilarious it's, that's it's, great yeah, yeah. It's, Al we have to hear from you well I think we've actually covered just about just about <laughs> everything the only thing that uh, that I think we haven't mentioned and it's not uh, and it's just just really is a collectible is this um, Lego yellow submarine <laughs> set that came oh, out this yeah. fall yeah. I have it <laughs> yeah so <laughs> I haven't put it together yet but <laughs> <laughs> you know, for people who are into those those types of things, either Lego things or puzzles or, you know, that's that's certainly uh, I've heard very good, you know, very good feedback about that. Mm-hmm. Well, and uh, yeah. and Kurt Adler put out a bunch of new Beatles Christmas uh, ornaments this year, including mm-hmm. a, a yellow submarine and a, a, a Sergeant Pepper drum. So. Hmm. Well, I have my list, but it's pretty much all been covered here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know once Steve brought up Lawrence Juber, I think I had nothing left. But uh, <laughs> I'll just quickly run down the list. The Eight Days a Week, uh, DVD, um, Beatles Live at the Hollywood Bowl, Pure McCartney, I really liked as a compilation. Um, and I think it's really good for the newbie to pick up uh, Pure McCartney there. In the Blink of an Eye, I thought was a really good song. The one new song from Paul this year, um, the Weakling Studio 2, Lawrence Juber, Paul and Ringo touring as a highlight of the year, just the mere fact that they're still at it on a regular basis. The paperback came out for Tune In, Mark Lewison's book. Yes. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yep. This mm-hmm. is a big year for paperbacks <laughs> of yep. previous mm-hmm. sidecover books. And um, as Al mentioned, sound breaking. Really, what I have watched of that show looks just, uh, it's, it's exhilarating. You know. It's fabulous, and, it is. And, and it's really nice to know that it was probably the last project that Sir George Martin was involved with. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, there was one particular episode where they where they talk about the Beatles, and in particular, 
uh, Revolver and Tomorrow Never Knows and spent yes. a lot of time on yes. that. Yes. And they, mm -hmm. they bounce off that. I think that they kind of compare Pet Sounds with Revolver and mixing in Sgt. Pepper. And, you know, it's, it's really fascinating stuff, what they were doing. And, yes, the Chuck Gunderson books and paperback to some fun mm -hmm. tonight. So that's my list, too. Uh, if I may add one more I forgot to mention mm. was George Fest. I thought that was very interesting. Um, I didn't, uh, the, yeah. the, uh, George Fest, the DVD and, and CD, <clears throat> you know, that was a pleasant surprise. Uh, when I first heard that, you know, you hear some of these tribute concerts and you think, oh, I don't know, you know. That, and uh, But this one, I thought it was a very eclectic group of artists and uh, and they did some very interesting um, interpretations of, of a lot of George's songs. So if you're a George fan, particularly, I think it's worth uh, a listen and and to see the, the concert because it's, uh, as I said, just very unusual interpretations and artists you wouldn't necessarily, you know, uh, automatically say, oh, they, they're a perfect fit. Uh, I mean, there are some obvious ones. I mean, they have uh, Brian Wilson, I think is in it, Nora Jones, and some others. Uh, but but there are some nice surprises in there, too. So, um, you know, that was, a, that, as I said, pleasant surprise. Not only that, but they mm -hmm. cover not just the big hits. Right, exactly. There. And uh, in particular, I think it was Ian Asbury of the cult did Be Here Now. Mm -hmm. And it was just stunning. It really yep. was. By the same token, is it Weird Al Yankovic that did What Is Life? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. really unusual As, picks like that. And, and just, yeah. you know, not... not <laughs> not people you would associate, you know, as as really interpreting the songs, but they did a great job. I I was uh, as I said, that was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, just to hear certain songs that normally you don't hear on the radio from George. I think exactly. you know, Danny did a re a really good version of "Let It Down." Oh, that was a that was I think probably my favorite part of that whole thing. That he just did an incredible job. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but I would suspect the um, Brian Wilson autobiography also has a lot about the Beatles in it. Have any of you guys seen that? No. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am Brian Wilson, it's called. A memoir. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I haven't I have I don't have it. Uh, the, I don't know. a couple of reviews that I've seen actually they were comparative reviews of Brian's book and Mike Love's book. Mike Love's book and yeah. uh, and actually Mike Mike Love's book got better reviews. Oh, really? So, yeah, it sounds like Brian's book, which was compiled apparently from a series of interviews that were done with him for this project. And, uh, you know, the problem, you know, it's the usual problem of yeah. which Brian you get on a particular day, mm. whether it's, <laughs> you know, whether he's all, you know, whether open and willing to talk or whether he's completely closed up. Yeah. So hmm. apparently it's very uneven. Mm. Mm. Okay, so uh, in addition to talking about the past year, one of the things I like to bring up in our year-end show is to give us our own wish list for what we would like for next year. And uh, in particular, we'll mention one from each Beatle and then a group uh, release. So why don't we start with Alan? Okay, um, let's see, from each Beatle. Um, uh, I'd like to see actually a new studio album from Paul. I, I, I think um, the inclination seems to be to put out a lot of tour albums these days, and not just him. You know, look at the Stones, for God's sake. Um, yeah, really. You know, mm -hmm. um, but, I, but I'd like to hear some new studio stuff. I mean, you know, with Paul, you never know what it's going to be. It might be something I like, might be something I don't like, but, but that's part of the adventure, and, um, you know, just would like to hear some new stuff so uh and i suppose the same from ringo um yeah you know why not uh from john and george no, why not was a few years ago already <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> outtakes from why not <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'd like to see from um, George and John, obviously, some more archival projects. I mean, you, you know, in a way, you, you can't fault Yoko. She's done quite a lot of archival stuff over the years. But lately, there hasn't been too much. And um, I think there's still plenty of that stuff left. I mean, uh, there's a 
out out on bootleg, you know, just based on things like the Lost Lennon tapes and other things that have gotten out. There's a huge set of demos from 1975 to 80. Um, she's put out some of that, but not a lot of it um, and not a huge percentage of it. So I'd like to see more of those and maybe some more studio outtakes from the earlier albums. Um, and the same with George. I mean, we could even start with, you know, the early takes volume two um but there is plenty more george to be heard and i think they're moving um a little too slowly on this project um so let's say this is john george ring i think i've done all four of the solo ones so um for group stuff god what am i usually saying they should be doing that they're not doing well you know maybe the let it be film with an extra disc of uh you know uh Good, you know, good stuff from the filming sessions. You know, the alternate edit of Let It Be, where it's a, you know, a relatively happy film, and um, you know, just at, at, at any time they want to put out, you know, something like the anthologies. I'm always interested in that stuff. I mean, there's they they could put out a huge amount of BBC stuff that's still not out there apart from on bootlegs. Um, I, what I guess I'd like to see them do the Beatles as a group do is stop surrendering the market to bootleggers and collectors who, you know, put out things everybody wants to hear when they could be doing it themselves. Mm hmm. Okay. okay. All right. Kit, how about you? Oh my gosh. Um, I would like to, I'd love another um, live um, album from Ringo. Uh, we haven't had one of those in a while, and, and uh, I'd love to hear whether it's an all-star uh, album or if he's doing, you know, he does some of the, uh, you know, he does some other solo tours. I'd love to hear that. George, absolutely, I'm going to echo Alan here. I want early takes volume two. In fact, I would love an anthology like, uh, like you know, they did, uh, like Yoko did for uh, for John, you know, some years ago. I would love to see a deluxe set like that for for george um that's, i don't that's think probably, that's going to happen i, I think know. everything will be a single disc at a time i know i know but you know <laughs> it's a it's a wish list you know right. it's my wish um mm -hmm. <laughs> i can i can dream um and uh let's see uh with paul absolutely um uh, i would love you know i've i've always would have loved to to have you know, cold cuts out as a real album, but you know, <laughs> again, that's a dream. But but absolutely, new material would be great. Um, yeah, John, um, definitely, I'd love to hear some more. Um, it, as Alan just said, more demos that that are still out there. And for the group, I I think Alan touched on this already too, but I'd love a complete BBC um, collection. You know, I mean, we have a lot. You know, a lot has come out, but there's still stuff out there, uh, and I love love their their live BBC sessions, and and so I I absolutely would would love to see that released, uh, and of course let it be, you know that's that goes without saying. So so yeah uh, yeah, I only mentioned pretty much a lot of my top picks uh, already, but that's uh, yeah that's what I think I'd like. But again, okay. it's it's a dream. <laughs> I can dream, can I? That's As right. As the song said. Mm -hmm. Al, you're next. Okay. Uh, very, actually, very similar list. Uh, certainly for, uh, uh, for, for Ringo and Paul, uh, new studio albums, which I think are pretty much in the works anyway. Uh, I think it's, there's a... Pretty good. There's a very good chance that we're going to see new new studio albums from both of them. Um, of course, "Flowers in the Dirt" would have been uh, yep. part of a, a wish list, but uh, you know now that's uh, become reality. Uh, for John, some kind of archival release. Uh, you know, I, I don't know whether the the attitude is that they've that they've exhausted most of the really the really good material who knows but uh but some kind of archival 
release would be would be nice. Uh, I keep going back to the same well with uh, with George. This album that he that he talked about in the interview that he did with with Timothy White at the end of uh, uh, two thousand, I guess it was. It was when, actually it was actually when the Yellow Submarine song track came out. He gave. Oh, that. it was a year earlier then. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. And uh, talked about this this multi disc set of outtakes and rare tracks and various and sundry things, and uh, that's you know never come close to uh to any kind of release and and also and i believe it was olivia who had talked about this at some point was a uh, a recording from the 1974 tour which you know aside from mm. those two weeks in japan in 1991 it's the only tour that he ever did and so there should be some audio document of uh, of that tour uh and video although, and video. And video as well, yeah. Sure, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, it looks, though, it looks more likely, though, uh, Steve uh, had, a, had a piece uh, over the weekend, I think, that apparently it's more likely that we're just going to see a, uh, a vinyl box right. of some kind, which is apparently what uh, uh, Danny was uh, hinting at uh, in an uh, in an internet posting, oh, uh, right. uh, within the last few days, mm-hmm. so you know we'll see. Uh, and for the group, uh, the obvious, let it be. But it would be, as Kit's suggestion, it would be really really nice to get a an official version of the Great Dane BBC box. There you go. You know, uh, some kind of of relatively complete BBC document because um, uh, like Kit, the the BBC recordings are among my favorite parts of the the Beatle canon. Mm-hmm. I think what you'd want them to put out now is the Lord Wreath version, which is um, like mm-hmm. 20, 24 discs, including right. the DVD. Um, oh, really? oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Now we're talking. Yeah. Now, now we're st- talking. I'm still working with the, the Great Dane box. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. And what do you think the reality is of that coming out? Zip. Uh, Zip. Yeah, zero. zero. <laughs> 24 just We get two at a time. Yeah, you know, that's, yeah and, and with that's, the comments that's, between that's, the tracks edited so that they're not really, you know, totally what was said, I think they have to stop that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. In fact, another Christmas wish, just another you know, holiday wish, would be for Apple to hire people who are really, really devoted to this stuff and want to do it right and know what the sources mm-hmm. are and know what the material is and will be able to talk them into not doing it the record business way but doing it in the people who want to hear what actually happened way. Well, mm-hmm. I think that they had to start with you. Uh, actually, they yeah. Could, oh, yeah. there are a lot of people well, they could start but, with. But, but, yeah. but you, you would be a good start on that one, Alan. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So all of us would. <laughs> no, I said that too. Yeah. yeah. Said all of us. Steve, I would like. All right, let me start with George. Um, I recently. Well, I mean, I we should take. I mean, they've been out there for a long time. they uh, when we're talking about George archival releases. Um, there's a whole series of um, all things must pass stri- uh, stripped stuff. Um, that would that should come out. Um, it'd be great to put that out, like you know, like John and Yoko did with Double Fantasy stripped. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. All things must pass. Good idea. Um, as far as Ringo, well, maybe, and Paul, maybe all the demos that have come out of All Things Must Pass material is kind of representing that. Yeah. As opposed uh, to the studio versions of the songs on the album just stripped down, mm-hmm. which I like that idea too, but. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, Ringo and Ringo and Paul are both putting out are both working on new albums, so I think that's probably, you know, I I, I don't think there's anywhere to go with that. I don't know that a Ringo live album would would be any anything to get excited about. Paul probably just to have it or just to document it because he keeps changing the set list every year. I think that would probably be a a good thing. But and mm. you know, as far as John goes. Um, 
there's all sorts of things you could do there. Here's something that came to me. How about some John and Yoko sessions? And I know there's people out there going to cringe going, Yoko, no! But actually, two of them worked together in the studio doing some very interesting stuff. And maybe if you still let down to a single single album uh, of stuff they did, I'm Walking on Thin Ice, of course, is one thing. But there mm-hmm. were all sorts of single tracks that you could go through all the way through their history that they worked on together. Uh, I think some of that, uh, and there's probably stuff in the studio that we've never heard that I think would be kind of interesting. As far as the group goes, um, there's three things. Let it be. I think they're saving for the, you know, for the 50th anniversary. I think that's going to, I think, I think they're going to hit that then. Um, they, don't, they don't get involved with anniversaries. Well, yeah. they, they do when it comes to the copyright situation. And I think, I don't think they're going to let that pass um, without doing something for that. And that may be the reason why they're sitting on it so long. I, w- I wish I, I wish I, I'd gladly be wrong on this because I really think it's, this is getting insane. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Quit mm. screwing around and put the stupid movie out. I mean, come on. If you're listening, guys, <laughs> I, there probably is somebody you know, listening, but, you know, let's stop with the BS and get this thing out. I mean, there's no reason to to hold on to it now. It's almost 50 years. Everybody's seen it. And, you know, I mean, it's not going to hurt you. You know, I, I realize that there's some sensitivity about this thing, but let's just, you know, forget it and get it over with and get it out. I mean, we've seen the clips in, you know, in eight days a week, and, you know, and in other places, it looks fantastic. Um, let's quit messing around and get it out. The same. I, I mean, I'd also mention as a sidelight Shea Stadium, but I think Let It Be is a lot more important. Mm-hmm. And if they mess around, yeah. you know, let's get that out. Another thing to put out is the Christmas album. Why? Here we have another Christmas, and we still don't have the Christmas album out. And that blows me away. I, I can't understand that either. When we have, you know, I mean, there are some crazy Christmas albums out there. <laughs> I've been doing, I've been doing a little bit of listening, and I, I, I don't know that I mentioned it on the air, but one of the things I picked up in my travels this year was the Twisted Sister album, which is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> I mean, and if you haven't heard it, go on YouTube and listen to "Oh Come All Ye Faithful." It will make you scream. It is so funny. And and I mean the Beatles thing is hilarious and that's you know and that's the reason to put it out. I mean it's a it's a you know between the humor in the first couple of recordings and the the music in the later ones. I mean it, it's it's a document. It's a great piece of you know it's a great piece of art. Put the stupid thing out. But the other thing would be get back and start doing the bootleg recordings again. Why they had, the reason to quit that was dumb uh, for whatever. You know, whoever decided that that wasn't worth it anymore, you know, start doing that again. Get those out. You're you're getting the Beatles are getting, if I can use the word screwed, they are getting screwed by companies in Europe that are that are using that public domain law to their advantage. Mm. And they are mm. putting out, you know, five and six discs sets that are relatively cheap. Of BBC, of Beatles, of uh, live stuff. There's even one that has Ed Sullivan stuff, which mm-hmm. I don't know how the hell they're they're getting away with that one. But you know, the the way the the Beatles could put a stop to that is to put the stuff out themselves. Back to what Alan was saying, let's quit. You know, quit messing around. Put this stuff out. And, well, they can and, also put I, a know. stop to it their traditional way, which is to sue them. Yeah. <laughs> right. Though it's different, uh, Alan, and that's where a lot of this stuff is coming from. I mean, you can't get it here, but all you have to do is go, you know, to one of the online vendors across the sea, and you can get it very easily. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you know. All, I, 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 I don't want to mention the record labels, but there's one. In, you know, there's a couple that are doing it, and and it's just stupid that that they're letting this happen. You know, it's crazy. Mm. Uh, and it, it's almost a tragedy that mm. you know these guys are getting away with this stuff, and and the Beatles aren't taking advantage of it. I mean, well, you know, we, we've talked about this a lot right. here on the show <laughs> about you know the Beatles have such a high standard that they set that they don't want to put out something that is below par. 
in their minds, you know, and we might think differently. And we also think that so many things have such historical importance. And I agree with that philosophy. There's no reason why the Beatles at Shea Stadium shouldn't be out. Think right. Of the historical importance of that. But then we're not them. And we don't think like them necessarily. But, you're get, but so. what you're getting, what you're getting is you're getting "Love Me Do," "P.S. I Love You," the studio recordings. There's no compromising quality there. You're getting Philadelphia, the recording which we talked about a couple weeks ago, uh, that mm-hmm. is excellent quality. You're getting BBC stuff, which. Again, is is excellent quality. I mean, the the quality of of the recordings themselves is not an issue. It's the fact that these collections are being put out, you know, under their name, and they're not making any money off of it because mm. it's because of the laws in 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 Europe. Is, right, is what it is. Yeah, but you know, I mean, it makes it, it's it's stupid that the Beatles are just kind of letting this stuff happen. You know, yeah, but, well, it's a, but it's a misunderstanding it of the law in Europe because it does not become public domain. The rights reser- revert to the artists. The whole aspect of copyright there is to do with whether the record company maintains the, the copyright on it. And um, it, it, it does not become public domain. I mean, I think that's sort of a huge misunderstanding of the European law. And that's why Apple could sue them successfully if they, could, if they bothered doing it. Hmm. Okay. You know, if the Beatles wanted it out, they'd put it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just that simple, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, my list will take less than a minute. <laughs> 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 uh, John, it's very simple. We've been hearing for the last several years that Jack Douglas has been working on the one to one concert. Yeah. Oh, Where, oh, oh, oh yeah. Yes. Uh, very good. Where yeah. are they? <laughs> You know, Good call. You could put together the afternoon and evening show together. I don't know mm-hmm. if there's any conflict there because ABC broadcast it at the time that the the, uh, the evening show was broadcast. Should make a difference. Nah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that if that had anything to do with holding. Why did John Lennon live in New York City? Why was that the afternoon show? Does anyone know? Nope. Um, but, you know, and put that out, a CD in the best sound quality, because the CD that came out in 1986, the sound quality is awful. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, very tinny sounding. So, that's what I would want from, from John, although I, I always want more of the material that we heard on the Lost Lennon tapes that have never come out commercially. I'd love to Ooh. hear more of that. Paul, new album, goes without saying. Although, let's not rule out the possibility here that just because Flowers and the Dirt's coming out next year, there might be another remaster coming out at the end of the year because we didn't get one this year. Mm-hmm. So, mm. you know, maybe this whole thing with Paul re-signing with Capital and Universal delayed Flowers and the Dirt. I don't know what the reason he was behind it. But uh, mm. we, may, we may get a second remaster next year. He has mm. done that from time to time. Tug of War and Pipes of Peace came out together. So mm-hmm. that might happen. Oh. And also, one thing that, that Steve was talking about with a live album, I really think that it's long overdue. Good Evening New York City came out in 2009, I think. And in all the tours since then, he's toured every single year. There's a lot of songs that he's done live that have never come out officially, you know, commercially. A lot of Beatles songs in particular that have not come out at all. I think, you know, that's, that's kind of overdue, I think. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'd like to see well, something like that come out. Except that there is the issue of, as we've talked about how many times now, yeah, his, voice. his voice. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But still, Paul will oversee something like that. He won't put out anything unless he's happy with it. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so we'll yep. see about that. George, early takes volume two. I love volume one. Yep. <laughs> volume two is so long overdue. Just the, the quality of all the songs on volume one. And a few surprises that were in there that we didn't even know about <laughs> in volume one. You know, like Let It Be Me was a nice surprise. There might be mm. so, so many little chestnuts like that that we don't know about. But, you know, part of our, uh, our interest, extreme interest in all this is that we don't know all that exists. And as, uh, you know, George did say in that Billboard uh, interview with Timothy White, you know, I've got more unreleased stuff than, than uh, mm-hmm. uh, Jim Reeves. The yeah. country artist. So, let's hear it. 
You know? yep. And for Ringo, a new album as well. The interesting thing about Paul when it comes to studio albums of new material, if you go back to Flowers in the Dirt, you will find that in most cases, new albums came out of new material every four years. Hmm. Not counting Run, Devil, Run and anything classical and the firemen, just the pop stuff. Most of the time, it's four years. And new came out in 2013. So it's time. Hmm. So, and with, uh, with the Beatles, I would definitely go with Let It Be. Although I would like to see some kind of concert compilation of some kind i think that's so important as in terms of history you yep. know to put out the beatles at shea definitely i don't understand why that shouldn't come out it's right. you know there's so many concerts we can point to but that was the first stadium concert and i do think that you know whenever i do hear the audio of it and the performance of it no matter how much you might talk about the sweetening of it i think it sounds great and i, I wouldn't be ashamed to release it so um, I hope that that comes out in the next few years. But let it be to me more than anything else should be out there. And I don't yeah. know if I brought this up on the show because I did attend a Q&A with Jeff Jones, the CEO of Apple. And it's kind of ironic. You know, we talk about this whole thing about the Beatles being aimed at the, the millennials. They were showing eight days a week in colleges, which is smart because mm -hmm. you got young kids watching this. And at the Q&A, the very first question anybody in the audience said was, when is Let It Be coming out? <laughs> and this oh. is, so it's like, you know, he's aware of, uh, you know, where things are in the Beatle world right now. And Jeff did say, plans are underway as we speak. So that Ooh. doesn't mean it's coming out next year, but I do believe it will come out. I guess what they have to really think about is what bonus material will be on there, if at all. So, um, yeah, I think uh, Let It Be will come out. I'm hoping for next year. I, I can't imagine it being that much longer of a wait. So, that's uh, what we said two years ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was a direct quote from Jeff. So, I'm going with that. <laughs> All right. So, that puts a wrap on this show. If anyone would like to get in touch with us, there's any number of ways they can do so. We have a, an email address here, which is things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. We have our own Facebook page at Things We Said Today. We have a Twitter page. And how do you get there, Steve? Uh, things We Said Fab. And the, and the uh, Facebook page is Things We Said Today, Beatles Radio. And let me quickly mention that um, eight days a week uh, deluxe Blu-ray contest uh, goes till the 25th, till Christmas Day. And if you want to get one of two copies, send your name and address to Things We Said Today radio show at uh, gmail.com us only entries only please okay so, that's so if people want to get in touch with you directly steve how can they do that uh beatles examiner at gmail.com i also have my own personal page on facebook and i have a new beatles news uh group called beatles news and commentary uh, that you're welcome to join how about you al Okay, uh, you can, for now, I'm hanging in on, on Facebook, uh, you can get me there, uh, at Al Sussman, or on Twitter, at ASUSS49, or through Beetle Fan Magazine, www.beetlefan.com. Uh, I want to put in a little plug for something that uh, Alan Haber and I recorded at the end of this past week. Since uh, uh, Alan Haber's Pure Pop Radio is one of the uh, one of the affiliates that carries uh, things we said today, uh, we recorded a Beatles-themed Christmas show. Uh, uh, we'll, I believe, run about an hour. Um, the the debut of it actually will be before this show uh, actually is is ready for uh, you know. Re before it drops, as we as as they say in the <laughs> trade, uh, but uh, I'm sure Alan will be running it um, at various points during the uh, during the next week. So uh, you uh, you should have a chance to catch it. It was a, it was a lot of fun, 
mm. and it was uh, and and it was interesting since mentioned uh, since uh, uh, Alan mentioned the Beatles Christmas album, uh, we were actually unable to use any of the any of the Christmas messages because they're not currently, even though everybody plays them, uh, Alan says that apparently they're not in copyright. You know, not in at least broadcast copyright. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And that's... that poses a problem for me because if I was to produce a Christmas special for, for every little thing, there yeah. are some stations that actually would refuse to play it yeah. for that reason. Yeah. So. Hmm. Which is weird since, like I said, everybody in the world, every Beatles show on Earth plays the, you know, the Christmas messages. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, Alan, how about you? Um, people can get in touch with me through Facebook at either Alan Cozen or Alan Cozen Remixed. And I'm on Twitter at, um, at Cozen. Okay. And Kit? How about you, contact information for you? You can uh, reach me on Facebook. I'm, I'm on there under Kiddo Tool. I'm also on Twitter under Kiddo Tool. I have a website at kiddotool.com, and I should say uh, that every couple weeks or so, I do a Facebook Live uh, session on uh, my, my uh, Facebook page, and uh, I always post when I'm going to do it, and it's fun. You know, I just talk about what stuff I'm working on, what's coming up. Uh, a lot of times we've had discussions, so, uh, so keep an eye on my page for, uh, for upcoming uh, live Facebook Live events. Okay. And as for me, Ken Michaels, you can always email me at everylittlething at att.net. I just want to say that on my website, kenmichaelsradio.com, there's a lot of things going on. As Steve mentioned, Lawrence Juber has a new Christmas album out called Holidays and Holly Nights. I just did an interview with Lawrence, which is on my website. And I'm also in a special contest giving away that CD signed by him with a set of guitar strings to boot. And uh, so you can win that. That's my current special contest on my website. But the last special contest of the year, which will start, I believe, December 28th or 29th, is the one of the biggest ones I've done on, on my website. And I'm giving away five prizes all at once. And they're pretty much, for the most part, the biggest releases of the past year. And actually, I'm cheating because... I'm including the Beatles One Plus in there. So it's the end of last year. But it carried over into this year. So mm -hmm. it's the Beatles One Plus CD and DVD, eight days a week, Blu-ray Deluxe, the Beatles Live at the Hollywood Bowl, Pure McCartney, double CD. And Kit has just told me she's kind enough to include her book, Songs You Were Singing, Guided Tours of the Beatles Lesser Known Tracks, winning all five in one shot. And it will start sometime, like I said, December 28th or 29th on my website, which is kenmichaelsradio.com. So this being, it looks like, the last show for us for 2016, I just want to take this time to wish everybody happy holidays, whatever holiday you celebrate, and uh, certainly a wonderful Christmas time. I'm going to pass you over to each of the members of the group. How about you, Steve? Uh, I just want to wish everybody a happy holiday, Merry Christmas, whatever you celebrate, and we'll see you next year. Al? Uh, Merry Christmas, a happy Hanukkah, since that begins on Monday, right? It's, um, the first night of it is Christmas Eve, actually. It's That's Christmas Eve, Eve. okay. Yes. Alrighty, happy Hanukkah, uh, happy Kwanzaa, or, you know, whatever, you know, happy Festivus, uh, you know, what. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you observe, uh, happy holidays and uh, and yes, we uh, let's uh, let's hope that uh, that 2017 is a uh, uh, a much better year for all of us, uh, all things considered. Here, than, here. Uh, yep. Yeah, Alan. And basically, what Al said, all of it, uh, especially the 2017 part. So happy holidays to everyone and all the best for the new year. And Kit? Well, I want to wish everybody happy holidays and uh, all the best and, and all happiness and health for 2017. And just to make sure that we don't forget, a big shout out to Fab Four Radio for yes. carrying our show. 
for several years now, uh, actually yeah. since uh, we started four <laughs> years ago, four plus, I think, uh, and Pure Pop Radio as well. Thanks to both of those stations for carrying things we said today. Thanks to all of you listeners for your support of this show. It means so much to us for you to be there uh, listening every single week. And uh, we wish you all the best for 2017. And we will see you same time next year. <laughs> Ooh, I, I just thought of that. Very good. Yeah. Right. That, <laughs> a, that, was, that, was, that was Ken's tradition back in, yeah. uh, in, in Jersey. I just came uh, back. He would he would play he would play same time next year. Keep the, as, keep the comments yeah. in at the end too. Keep the comments in. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, this? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. All right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs>